So part three is going to be about the properties of solids. The first thing we want to do is talk about the kinetic molecular theory differences for solids. In the first video we talked about the kinetic molecular theory for gases. In the second video we talked about the differences in that theory for liquids. And now we're going to talk about the differences in that theory for solids. So the forces of attraction, the inter and intramolecular forces, hold the particles of a solid in a rigid, uniform structure. Solid particles mostly only have kinetic energy from individual particle vibrations. So remember we talked about kinetic energy is that energy of movement, the energy of motion. And the only movement or motion they have is vibration. They're stuck in a rigid structure. This would be an example, like if you think of this like our salt molecule in class, like our crystal lattice, the particles are moving, they are vibrating, but they're not moving around freely at all. They're in a rigid, uniform structure. Here's um, a GIF showing you that um, arrangement. So here it's not a crystal lattice, we just have a solid, but you can see they're vibrating. They're not freely moving, they're stuck in that rigid structure, but they are moving. The density of solids. So most solids have high densities because of the, the particles are pulled closely together. Um, they are, solids are our slowest moving, so those inter and intramolecular forces are able to hold on tightly. They're held together really closely because of that, so that causes the high density. By definition, solids, solids form the maximum amount of forces of attraction between particles. So again, because solids are the slowest moving, they are able, those inter and intramolecular forces are old, able to form the maximum amount of uh, bonds or semi-bonds if you're talking about intermolecular forces, but those attract, forces of attraction, the maximum amount are able to exist. Usually this means the particles are held very closely together when this happens. Um, so again, we've looked at this picture for all three properties. Our solids are held the closest together. They have the maximum amount of intermolecular forces on every side. Water, however, is an exception to the density rule. So like all solids, solid water forms the maximum amount of forces of attraction between the molecules. In water's case, we have LDF, dipole-dipole and hydrogen bonds. LDF because it's a molecule, dipole-dipole because it's polar, and hydrogen bonds because we have that hydrogen bonded to that oxygen. Because each water molecule has two lone pairs, as you can see in the Lewis structure, and two hydrogens, each molecule can form four hydrogen bonds. These two hydrogens will bond to the lone pair of another oxygen, and this lone pair of oxygen will bond to another hydrogen, this lone pair will bond to another hydrogen. So every one of those is a hydrogen bond. Um, also, because of its bent shape, tetrahedral arrangement. So it's a bent shape, it's the bent 109.5, shape, but it's a tetrahedral arrangement. When we say tetrahedral arrangement, we mean that 109.5 angle, which is the angle for a tetrahedral. So they're all 109.5 degrees apart, but we have um, that bent shape. So again, these hydrogens will bond to the lone pair of an oxygen, and each of these lone pairs will bond to a hydrogen. Because of the arrangement of the electron groups, okay, an electron group is a bond or a lone pair, forming all four po possible hydrogen bonds leaves pockets of empty space between the molecules. These pockets we're going to be talking about, it's important to realize these are not air pockets. These pockets are not filled with air. They are pockets of empty space. There is literally nothing there. So you can see because of the tetrahedral shape, we get these hexagons. We have six molecules forming a shape, so it's a hexagon. And these are that those areas of empty space. They're solid. Okay. They are rigidly held in this place. They have the maximum amount of bonds forming. They have their hydrogen bonds, their London dispersion, and their dipole-dipole. They're held pretty rigidly in this shape, but when they are, there is this pocket of emptiness that forms between each hexagon. So how does this affect the density? We said water was the exception to the density rule for solids. When water is a liquid, not all of the possible hydrogen bonds form, so the water molecules are able to fill in those empty spaces and be close together. You can see that here. And if you remember when I've held it together, I've crumpled them and uh, let them move closely together, but they are freely, more freely moving. You can see that's what they look like with that um, 
model we have in class, and here it is on the molecular level. So you can see there are hydrogen bonds forming, just not all of them. Every one is not forming a hydrogen bond, not the maximum number created. So they're still pretty tightly packed together. However, when they slow down and every one of those hydrogen bonds is able to form, like you can see in this picture right here, they form that hexagon. And you can really see that hexagon here. And inside that hexagon is these pockets of empty space. Okay, and those pockets, therefore, unlike other solids, because all other solids are the most dense that we have, solid water or ice is less dense, less closely packed or more spread out than liquid water because of the empty spaces between the molecules that exist for solid water but not for liquid water. So you can see the molecules of the liquid water are closely packed packed together. However, with the solid water or ice, you get that hexagon shape with those pockets of empty space. So solid water is actually less dense than liquid water. Water is the only substance whose solid is less dense than its liquid, and that is because of those empty pockets of nothing. Solids in general also have a definite shape. So particles are packed tightly together by forces of attraction, whether that be the intermolecular forces in a covalent bond, the ionic bonds of an ionic compound, or the metallic bonds in a metallic compound. So they do not exhibit much movement, causing their definite shape. So again, they are vibrating, but their shape, their arrangement is pretty stuck in its, in its way. So they have a definite shape. They also have a definite volume. The particles are packed tightly together, so they have little room to compress. Uh, so that gives them the definite volume. So we're, if you remember, our gases were very compressible. Liquids are slightly compressible. Uh, solids are almost completely incompressible. Temperature and pressure can cause a very small change in volume. So if we heat something up, maybe cool something down, or change the pressure in some way, we can in fact cause a very small change in volume. If you think about running a metal cap under hot water when it's stuck on a glass container. So the example I like to use is the pickle jar. If you're trying really, really, really hard and you cannot get that pickle jar to open, then you run it under hot water. The hot water will cause the lid to expand and you can get it off pretty easily. Another example, um, which I actually was able to utilize this one in my new house, a uh, new apartment that I moved into, uh, it, my sh the shower head in the apartment that I was living in, um, I wanted to replace. I wanted to get a newer one. So I could not, for the life of me, get the shower head off. And uh, even when I got plumbing, a uh, plumbing wrench, it would not come undone. So what I did was I ran very, 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 very hot water through the shower head for about 10 minutes. And then I came back, tried to loosen it, and with the plumbing wrench, I was able to get it loosened because I had expanded that joint. Another example uh, is on bridges. And you, you will actually see uh, these right here if you notice next time you cross over a bridge. They actually have these joints that can uh, stretch out and, uh, and join back together so that when uh, it's cold and everything contracts, uh, the, uh, the bridge will not break. Same for when it's hot and they will expand, they will actually close that gap. So when it's colder, you'll see that gap between those little grooves. And then when it's hotter, you'll see them come back together. So let's look back at all of the properties that we had for solids, liquids, and gases. So gases have a low density. Remember, they fill their space, so they're going to be a very low density. They are very compressible. They fit to their container. So whatever container we put them in, that's the shape they're going to form. Same with their volume. And they do diffuse. They spread out to reach equilibrium. Liquids have a medium density. They are compressible, cr compressible, but not near as much as a gas. They form to their container as well, but they do not form the volume uh, to the container. Solids have a very high density. They are not compressible. They have a definite shape and a definite volume, and they do not diffuse. Due to its definite shape and volume, solids are neither compressible nor can they diffuse. So they can't diffuse and they are not compressible because of their definite shape and volume. That is why those two are the case.
Here's one more summary we have. It is in your notes. Uh, it just shows you our solid, our liquid, and our gas. We have examples of each and the molecular uh, example of each. That is all we have for solids. Uh, that is the final video, so enjoy the rest of your snow day.